if any of you were waiting on the Facebook page earlier when I was trying to upload this, um, I'm very sorry. I couldn't get a link. My name is Lori King. I am the first in a series of, uh, they were going to be Facebook Live, but I'm not sure what we'll do. Anyway, they are on Facebook. Um, events on specific writing topics that are sponsored by Mystery Writers of America, NorCal, the Northern California chapter. I am the current president, and therefore I get to be the, uh, the first one. And uh, my, my topic that I was um, handed was uh, the perfect first chapter, writing the perfect first chapter. Now, I, I, lo I love the idea that anyone thinks I know how to write anything that's perfect because um, I, I somehow don't think of myself as perfect, but um, what I what I think that I can talk about, if not perfection, is how to write a chapter that fits. A first chapter has to be certain things. Um, it has to be compelling. It has to be a basic foundation, but. One of the things that helps is if you know the rules before you start it out. Um, you're absolutely welcome to break the rules, but it always helps to know them before you do so. Now, I should start by saying that I am not an outliner. I am what I, what I call an organic writer. Uh, I being a Californian, we're all into organic. I don't tend to know very specifically where a book is going before I start it. There are people whose brains work in a different way than mine, who outline very happily, who write a book that feels spontaneous, even though they are working to an outline. That's not how my brain works. I have a habit of writing a first draft that is a kind of expanded outline so that it'll be 300 pages long but it's not a book it is the sort of proto book that gives me the basic structure of the thing and it tells me how the machinery works but it's not based on an outline now the first chapter is a kind of foundation, but unlike the foundations under your house, if your foundation, if your first chapter is not what you want, it's not the right shape, it's an awful lot easier to rebuild it on a keyboard than it is in bricks and mortar. So that's the first state. I am organic rather than an outliner. Um, sometimes you will find, especially if you are an organic writer, um, that it that your foundation, your first chapter, your beginning is not what you want. And that is when you go back and fix it. So either way, your first chapter has to do its job in a sure, clean way. Now, before you start the first chapter, before you set pen to paper or fingertips to keyboard. There are certain decisions that you need to make. Um, for one thing, you have to understand, and I'm assuming that most of you who are watching this are interested in the mystery genre because we are talking about Mystery Writers of America here. I am assuming that you understand this genre that we live in, that you understand the spectrum of storytelling that is the mystery world. You have at one end, you have the cozy, the basic traditional mystery. Um, the structure of that is very set. It's been used for decades and decades and decades, going on centuries now. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, you have the hardcore thriller. Um, and the two of them have different stories that they're telling. The one is fairly intellectual. 
the thriller is much more emotional. It's all about the ticking clock and the pressure that's going on. That kind of decision is going to affect your first chapter, obviously. Um, you also have to figure out, are you writing a series? If you are writing a book that is in a series, how much backstory do you want to put in that first chapter? How little can you get away with? Um, you also have to figure out your characters before you really start out. That is, not all the characters need to be fully fleshed. And certainly, if you are an organic writer like me, um, they're not going to be because you need to write them in order to know them. But you have some ideas about the characters. You have some ideas what you want to do with them, what they are going to find, the kinds of conflict that they're going to get into. You have to have a certain amount of idea when it comes to them. And you have to have some idea about your setting. What kind of time and place are we in? Um, is it one that everybody knows, or is it one that is completely foreign to 90% of your readers? All those things are decisions that you're going to have to take into account when you're putting your first chapter together. You also have such choices like the point of view. Um, first person, I is intimate and yet oddly limiting. You would think that you could do all kinds of things with the first person that in fact you can't because you're only looking through one set of eyes. You're only listening through one set of ears. And more than that, you are only perceiving the world through one set of preconceived assumptions. Third person is much more flexible when it comes to telling things on the outside. It allows you to look at your character. It allows you to make uh, judgments and speak about the character that you can't do with first person. Um, but it, at the same time, it's difficult to get that inner intimacy and reflection that you can get with first person. Now, I'm not going to say much about third person. I, I'm never really comfortable with um, stories that are written you. It seems to me a little bit of a just a sort of trick. Um, I, I understand theoretically that you could tell a good story set in second person, um, but it's not my choice. So I'm, I'm not going to talk about second person. First and third. You then have a question of what mood are you looking for in the book? Now this is something that I usually have in mind before I start because I want to have a sense of what this book is going to taste like, as it were. What sort of mood is it going to give the reader? When my reader shuts this book, what are they going to feel? Are they going to feel sad? Um, satisfied? Are they going to be laughing? Are they feeling their heart, their racing heart slowing down. What mood am I, what mood am I shooting for with this book? Um, it's something that comes along as you're writing as well, but I think that for me, and probably I would say for most people, it helps an awful lot if I know how I want to feel about this book before I go into it. Then you have such questions as tense. Um, am I writing um, past or present? Present is tricky. Um, sometimes it, it, it trips the writer up um, because it feels too insistent. Sometimes you can get away with it, and especially if you're writing more of a thriller when you're on the edge of your seat. Generally speaking, it's simplest to start with a past, whether that's first person or third person. 
The other question before we get to the first chapter is, is this a prologue or a preface or a chapter one? Generally speaking, unless you have a really good reason for thinking of this piece of your book as separate from the rest of the book, make it chapter one. If it is uh, out of the sequence of the books, of the book itself, if, for example, you're lifting a scene that comes much, much later in the book, um, if you are writing a character for your first part of it that is not your protagonist, sometimes you can make that a prologue instead. Or if it's based, if the book is based on some historical event that has nothing to do with the actual story, but forms the inciting incident, as it were, that gets the story going, sometimes that is better set aside and put into a preface or prologue. Um, generally speaking, a prologue feels uncertain. Um, you're not quite ready to commit to the story itself. It sometimes can feel old-fashioned, which may or may not be what you want in the book. So those are all considerations to, to take into account. Now, the first chapter itself. We're finally here. You can say that there are any number of elements in a first chapter, and um, you probably could say 30 or 90 or whatever. I am saying there are four because, in part, we are dealing with a short talk here. I am, I am given the command of making a brief, focused talk, so that's what we're doing. So, therefore, I am looking at four elements. Uh, the hook. You need an enticing hook in your first chapter. You need to give your reader a strong main character. You need the protagonist to be standing right there when they open the book. You need to have your first chapter to be the signpost of the story that follows. And one that's very slippery is voice. You need voice. So let's work our way through those four. Maybe first we should say what doesn't belong in a first chapter. Exposition. We don't want exposition. We don't want an info dump. We don't want long paragraphs of, this is what happened last week. This is where we are um, seeing the story take place. This is the history of these series characters. We don't want that. We don't want any of that in the beginning. It just gets in the way of the story itself. So none of that belongs in the first, the first chapter. We want as little as possible of any backstory, of any setting, or of any recap of previous books. So elements of a first chapter, the hook. When I was a high school student, my dad used to go fly fishing. He wasn't very good at it, but he loved to do it. And he used to pay us for tying flies for him because he wasn't very good at that either. And with a, with a dry fly, you take your hook, you clamp it into the thing, the little thing that turns around so you can wind your threads and your feathers on there. And you create an enticing little insect that sits on the top of the water and gets your fish. That's the image that you want with the first lines of your first chapter. You want something that doesn't look like a bug. It looks like something really delicious. Um, you don't really want to start with a ringing telephone. You don't want to start with a weather report. You certainly don't want to start with a backstory. 
you want to start with something that sets a hook in your reader and makes them keep turning the pages. One way of judging your first page is to look at it and see how much space is there on this page. Do I have a solid block of prose or do I have short sentences, short paragraphs, dialogue maybe? Not that those are a sure definition of what, what an enticing hook is. But if it's a solid hunk of prose, unless you're a really, really effective writer, that may not be the way to sink the hook in your, in your reader. Something that intrigues them something that startles them, something that's funny or odd or catches the attention. Um, depending on the book, maybe it's an ominous hint of what's to come. You definitely want to tease your reader. Think of that fly sitting on the surface of the water, teasing the, the fish up from below. Um, you want the reader to be left with a question, that is, what happens next? Jump, there's your hook. Character, your protagonist. Readers want to meet a compelling protagonist early on, very early in the book. If your protagonist is not in the first chapter, in the first line, first paragraph, then you need to have the person in that first chapter, someone who says something really essential about your protagonist, whether it's a background person, whether it is the antagonist, whether it is the, the partner. Um, and again, if it's not the protagonist, or someone essential to them. That may be one of the places where you want to, to make it into a prologue. Your character needs to be compelling. And by that I mean clear, simple, easy to see, slightly exaggerated. Take some of the characteristics that you see as essential to that, that character, your protagonist, and make them a little bit more so. What you want to do with the first appearance of your protagonist in a story is tell the reader why they care about them. Why should I care about this protagonist? This is a character that you are inventing. Why should I want to read the next 300 pages? Why should I want to pay $28 and devote the next 10, 12 hours of my life to this protagonist. What is it that I'm going to see in that protagonist that I don't see elsewhere? So compelling. The third characteristic of an effective first chapter is that it's a signpost to the rest of the story. And a signpost, you can also use the metaphor of it encapsulates the mood of the story. Uh, it's an appetizer for the meal that follows. There needs to be an essential continuity uh, between the first chapter and the rest of it. To exaggerate this, um, you don't want a silly um, slapstick first chapter for a story that has to do with um, the trafficking of children, for example. Um, that jarring quality is something you never, 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 never want to do. Um, the continuity between page one and the end is what builds trust in your reader, um, that they won't be mis misled, that you're going to do what you say that you're going to do from the very beginning, um, and you have the skill to carry that off. The signpost of the first chapter also needs to give an idea of 
the conflict that is key to this book. And conflicts can be of all sorts. There's often a number of different kinds of conflict going on in the story. That's a, uh, that's a topic for a different, um, different conversation. But the conflict that we find in the first chapter may not be the conflict that your protagonist ends up being most concerned with, but it has to lead directly into it. It may be a minor personal conflict, but it leads to a bigger thing. So you need to have those in mind as you're working up your first chapter is, where is this book going? And finally, the fourth topic is that of voice. Now, you talk to any New York publisher, editor, acquiring editor, and they will say that what they look for in a new manuscript, a new writer, is voice. <laughs> Which is a little problem because it's one of those things that's really difficult to define. How do I get voice? How do I speak voice in my manuscript? Basically, what they are talking about is self-assurance. Your entire book, obviously, needs to have a certain amount of self-assurance, but certainly your first chapter. The reader should get the feeling from the first step in the door that they are in good hands, that you know what you're doing, that you're not hesitant, that you're going to make it worth their while. And it shows that you are a master of the genre and the forms, and that they are going to then find themselves closing the book with satisfaction. So, if we have the hook, character, signpost, and voice, how do we do that? <laughs> As a, um, a non-outliner, I have to say, it doesn't matter if you start with a ringing phone or a weather report or a long personal history. It doesn't matter because you can get rid of them. Sometimes a first draft is a thing that you are thinking it through as you're going. Ideally, you know where you're going before you set off. Um, would that there were a GPS system uh, for, for novelists. But some of us need to invent the path as we go. So I would suggest that instead of worrying about your first line hook, your first line chapter, your fully realized and compelling protagonist, that you simply start writing. Until you have words on a page or on a screen, you can't improve them. It doesn't matter what it looks like as a first draft. All first drafts are crap. And, and if, if you find somebody who doesn't write awful first drafts, I don't want to meet them because they're not real. <laughs> first drafts are meant to be um, clumsy and piecemeal and experimental. When you finish their first draft is when you look back and you make a novel out of it. So if you are waiting until you have the perfect first line, you'll never write a book. It is true. There are sometimes first lines that are absolutely right from the beginning. And I find that those are usually, for me anyway, I find that those are usually times that I have been sitting on a book for a while before I can start it. And it's like there's a head of steam that is built up. So that when I, when I started in The Beekeeper's Apprentice, I actually wrote the first line then 
that is the first line now. I was 15 when I first met Sherlock Holmes. 15 years old with my nose in a book as I walked the Sussex Downs and nearly stepped on him. The reason that I left that is that it fits the story. It gives you the young woman. It gives you the fact that we're talking about Sherlock Holmes. Therefore, it's a historical. You have your place, the Sussex Downs, and you have a touch of humor of nearly stepping on him. So for me, that fit um, the book to come, and it didn't need changing. There are other books that um, I rewrite the first chapter time and again, quite often because the first chapter is me mulling over the backstory or mulling over the situation to hand. Uh, the one the, the book that I'm working on now has a fine beginning, but it soon descends into um, a, a sort of description of the research <laughs> that really doesn't belong there. So my rewrite will be moving most of that research into later times so that they find it out rather than they know it before the story begins. Quite often, um, a first chapter simply needs to be taken out. If you are not satisfied with your first chapter, open it to the second chapter and see whether that isn't more compelling as a story beginning. You can always plant the various bits of information from the first chapter elsewhere in the book. But often the first chapter is a, is a, is a sort of first swing, the trial swing at the at the bat, and needs to be taken out. Um, and again, it may not be. It Sometimes it works fine and other times it does not. So just remember that that ringing phone that starts your character. Now, I started um, A Grave Talent, which is the first published book I had. That starts with not only a prologue, but then for chapter one, a ringing phone. Would I do that now? Probably not. Uh, did it work for this book? I think so. I think so. It won an Edgar, so it wasn't too bad. Um, those can be changed anyway. Uh, your backstory, you certainly need to give backstory in bits and pieces later on, not in the first chapter. If the tone is not correct, if it doesn't really go with the rest of the book. Um, if your protagonist is <clears throat> slightly out of focus um, or standing to one side in the action of the first chapter, work on that. Is it perfect? No. Um, I, I dare to say that I will never write a perfect first chapter. And if you do, congratulations. But don't count on it. But does it fit? Is it a chapter that fits the book? Does it set the hook in the reader? Does it introduce a compelling protagonist? Does it lay the groundwork for the story that follows? And does it give the reader a sense of the strengths of the writer behind it? Then yes, it fits. Um, and again, that is what a rewrite is for. Uh, you need to focus on simple, clear, vivid prose, especially in the first chapter, throughout the whole book, obviously. But your pacing can relax somewhat when you get into second and third chapters. The first chapter has to be tight and tighter. Um, any bits of exposition, explanation, description. You have to look at every bit of that and say, do I have to know this? Does the reader really need to know this in order to make sense of the story? And if not, cut it or move it. What you are doing with the chapter one is setting a foundation for the rest of the book. 
But even more than that, you are enabling the reader to go on with a sense of anticipation for chapter two. So if the reader is ready, if the reader is eager, then your chapter fits. What you want is a reader who is ready, who is perfectly ready. Thank you very much, and I hope that this was of some help to any of you who are looking at that all-important first chapter. If you enjoyed it, do stay tuned for any of the MWA NorCal talks on many writing topics. Thank you.